So the Drake and Meek Mill beef. Yes, sir. You gonna make me buy bottles for Charlemagne? I appreciate it. And the next day you got some bottles. No, the same day. The same day you got some bottles. A very, very well calculated move it was by Drake. Okay. You know, um, this, the record came out at 4.30 that morning. Um, I, remember, I remember waking up and getting, the, you know, people was texting me like, well, somebody texted me and was like, yo, you, you gonna wanna hear this new Drake this? And I said, what new Drake this? And they was like, he, he's dropping a new, he just dropped a new record. Go to his page, his Twitter. Go to his Twitter, listen to it. I'm like, oh, okay. But, you know, I, I was impressed by that whole situation prior to back to back. And the reason I was impressed by that whole situation is because we live in an era, man, where a lot of stuff that we came up on just don't happen no more. Like, we, get, we grew up in an era when rappers would battle with each other if they had an issue. Yeah. You know, and if you did call me out, you called me out, but you had some bars to back it up as well. Right. And, you know, me, you know, got on Twitter called Drake out, went in on his, his rant about the ghostwriting and whatever. And I just thought it was dope that Drake responded with bars. Yeah. I didn't really like Charged Up. It was cool. Yeah. It had some slick bars in it. It wasn't crazy to me. I'm no. like, oh, okay. You know, especially with the reaction that it got on social media, I didn't feel like it was that crazy. But then I, I was just impressed on some hip-hop shit that he replied with bars. Because, I mean, yo, if you questioning my craft... Yeah. If you coming at me saying, okay, yo, he got a ghostwriter, he don't even write his own rhymes, all right, boom, here, take that. So I just thought that was dope on some just hip-hop shit. And then four days later, none of us was expecting back-to-back. No, not at all. None of us was expecting back-to-back. I was expecting Meek to actually come with something harder after Charged Up. I actually had more money on Meek in the battle. Me too. Just because I, I feel like that's what Meek, what Meek comes from. Meek, is, yeah. Meek was the dude on the street with the dirty braids and was battle rapping. He's an aggressive dude. You know, he speaks to people's lower nature, meaning he would be the guy that would say some real disrespectful shit, like, oh, yeah, that's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker, like how Pac did on yeah. him up, which he, which he kind of did with you saying Drake got peed on, you know? <laughs> but, you know, four <laughs> days later, Drake came with that back-to-back, and I'm like, man, Meek, where you at? And I still didn't want, I, I still was waiting for Meek's shot. Everybody was like, yo, Sean, man, you got to give Meek donkey of the day. I'm like, nah. First, they wanted me to give him Donkey of the Day for the Twitter rant. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that because all he's doing is the same thing I do all the time, which is slander Drake. And then when he was supposed to come out with the record that Monday, and that never happened, I said, nah, I'm going to wait. Then Drake came with back to back. I'm like, yo, Meek's going to be in Toronto tonight, so maybe he's going to do something. Right. Toronto came and went, which was, Meek, which was Meek's opportunity. If Meek was going to do anything... He should have did it that night. He was in Toronto. You think though? But doing it in Toronto, you're dealing with a hostile crowd. So what? Do you remember when Jada Kiss and Beanie Siegel was beefing? You know what Jada Kiss set it off at in Philly at Powerhouse. Huh. He did that freestyle. You okay, know, yeah. tell Siegel we riding again or whatever. Cut his leg off, whatever it was. He did that in Philly at Powerhouse. Meek's back was two up against the wall. He had to take that kind of risk. It wasn't no time for a shot. Yeah. Now nah, this dude's killing you. You got to get him. You, you, you should be going for fatalities at this point, not yeah. just shots. So he should have did it in Toronto. And then, you know, back to back came and then me came with his response. Or was it that Thursday night? And it was garbage. It was late. It was late. And it was garbage. And um, I'll put it like this. Me and Jamar were talking about this yesterday. When it comes down to like the all time great battles, this will not go down as one of those. Yes, it will. You think so? Absolutely. You you would compare this to to take over an ether. I mean, it's not about comparing them. It's like it's like eras. You know, it's like uh, like like me. I don't. You can't compare LeBron to the Jordan. Bridge is over. You can't compare the eras. Those different eras. Like fifteen Ja Rule. You can't compare them. It's just this is this was this has been so far the best rap battle we've seen of this era. The only problem with this battle was it was just lopsided. But guess what? Fifteen Ja Rule was lopsided too. But we still enjoyed that. Like we well, fifteen J- ja Rule never really responded. Yes, he did. He did a whole album. Blood of my blood. Cap, cap, cap back. Uh, I mean, clap back. He did but a, it was so ja- late, and later it was, on, it was, he it wasn't. Was. When fifty was going at his neck, Ja wasn't saying nothing. Now yeah. I'd heard that there was some street shit that was happening during and, that time. And you know what? We had Ja on Uncommon Sense. I had yeah. Ja on Uncommon Sense to discuss. I had him on the week of the, the Meek Drake thing. And he discussed it, and he goes in his mind. He thought he was winning, because in the street. They was coming at Fifth. Fifth was getting stabbed. He was getting shot. They, Fifth couldn't come out the house. That's what Josh ja said. And so he felt like he was winning. He said by the time he replied with music, it was too late. Nobody right. cared anymore. Yeah. You know, but... 
even still, it still was lopsided. Fifth was killing him on, on all fronts. And I think even with this situation we saw with Drake and Meek, Drake just boxed Meek into a corner that he couldn't get out of. So you've done a number of interviews on Vlad TV mm -hmm. where you talked about Drake. Uh, does this change your relationship now with Drake? I don't know. I don't think we don't have a relationship. Okay. Did did that week like change the way I view him? Yeah, because it's like the soft kid, you know that 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 you've been thinking is pussy this whole time, got pushed in a bar. None of us knew this soft kid was a UFC fighter. <laughs> and he kicked motherfucking Meek Mill's kneecaps in. And then he took Meek Mill's arm and stuck it up his ass. And Meek Mill's hand came out of his mouth. And then he kicked him down a motherfucking steps into a burning pit. That's how bad it was. Like, it was, it was really bad. Like, Charged Up was decent. It had some bars in it. Back to Back is a tough diss record. I don't give a fuck what nobody said. I ain't, beat, the beat is not that hard. What? The, the charged up, I mean, nah. the back-to-back -back beat really could have been a lot better. Yeah, but in the club, it goes. And I tell y'all all the time, the greatest disc records in the world are the ones that play in the club. Hit them up. Dre Day. You know why? Because nothing infuriates your opponent more. That's where these guys live. So not only did I do a disc record, I made a hit record. I made a record that's charting on Billboard and a record that is probably the biggest record in the club right now. Yeah, I mean, you never really hear... The Meek Mill record on the radio no. or in the club. Back to back is playing every hour on the hour because it's a hit record. Girls are twerking to that record. You in the club, shout out to all my pause bitches, waving niggas. <laughs> like they screaming at the top of their lungs. Like it was a hit record. Drake, he, he got that off. So I mean, it's, yeah, I, I gained some respect for Drake on just a strictly hip hop level. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, because he didn't have to respond. He's Drake. He's he he, he could have just let that go. And like I've always said, I've always said right here on this black couch, I hate when that boy sings. I can't stand it. But when he raps, he be, could be one of the best. It's a Vlad video that I saw somebody run. I forgot I even said that, but it's the truth. It's like, why try to be the next Trey Songz or Miguel when you can be the next Hove? What he did that week was very Hove-like. <laughs> the back-to-back -back disc was, was dope. And the, 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 the top it off at the OVO Fest with all the memes. All the memes yo, yeah. it, was such, it was such an execution of the 48 Laws of Power that it was oh, amazing. Yeah. Because... You, you, you give your opinion about somebody, which he did on Back to Back, and then you let public opinion hang them. Right. So you had all of these people creating all of these different memes. All, all Drake did was create the narrative. Yeah. And then these people came with the visual. And right. then you incorporate the two at OVO Fest. You use old school tactics, which is just rhyming. Oh my God, a rapper raps? Yes, they still right. do that in 2015. With the, with the memes, yeah. it, was, it was damn near it was, genius. It was super strategic. I mean, even Joe Budden said that, like, you know, he mentioned... Drake even made peace with someone he didn't like. You. Yeah, you know <laughs> you why? Because people, people are people aren't. We we we're so uh, prisoners of the moment that we forget how the whole situation played out. The whole situation played out because all those Ghost Rider references. I got those same phone calls that week. Hmm. Yo, Charlemagne, you know, dude don't write his own music. Drake don't write his own records. You know, you know. Got reference tracks, whatever, whatever. Oh, so people were calling you for that too? Absolutely. So okay. they sent me, they sent me um, the Tim Band shit. And I'm gonna be honest with you, man. In my mind, I just did not care. Like I, I, I was looking at it. And I'm like, so what should I do with this? Should I, what should I do with this? Like in my mind, that's what I was saying. So what am I supposed to do with this? Like I really just didn't care. Like, cause that wasn't gonna make anybody not like Drake. Yeah. And I'm not a hater, so I ain't got no reason to try to tear this guy down, ruin his career. Yes, yeah. I got an opinion. You know, what do I think about ghostwriting? I don't know, to be totally honest you don't know? with you. Who's your favorite rapper? Ghostface Killer. Okay, so let's just say you found out that, uh, you know, you, God, actually wrote all of Ghostface Killer's raps. I'd be crushed, but I doubt that's highly, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's highly unlikely. It's not what I'm saying, whether it's unlikely or not. If you found out that you, God, had been ghostwriting all of Ghostface Killer's yeah. albums and you I found the reference tracks and everything... Yeah, I'd and, be, I'd be, and, and, and I'd be, Ghostface I, didn't really have a good explanation for it. How would you feel about Ghostface being your favorite rapper? I'd be, I'd be, I'd be hurt, but I'm not gonna stop listening to Ghostface music. No, I'm not gonna throw no. I'm not gonna delete no Ghostface off my iPod. I'm gonna say to myself, "Damn, Ghostface delivered this way better than you, God woulda." Like that's just the truth to the matter. Like it's not. It, it don't affect me, is what I'm saying, and that's how I really felt when Drake sent me the trash. Because in my mind, I'm like, I don't listen to Drake no way. So it damn sure didn't affect me on that level. Right. I never, I never, I never been like, oh shit, Drake is my favorite MC. I don't, I didn't, I really, honestly, did not care. So I didn't jump 
at that opportunity right. to use that against him. But your man down the dial did pump fake or flex. Pump fake or flex went crazy. All on Instagram with the memes and the tweets and tweeting them. Uh, you, you write your own rhymes and going in on them, you know, all that stupid shit. So Drake was smart. An enemy of my enemy is my friend. So he became your, so he said, let's be friends. And it started, no, it, start, it started with, it, this is how strategic it was. It started with Charged Up. And Charged Up, he goes, I tell DJ Clue to drop a bomb on it. Yeah, and Clue's on Power 105. And the bomb is not Clue's. The bomb belongs to Pump Faker Flex. Clue never does the bombs? No. No? Okay. You know that. You know. No, no, no. I, I know that Flex does bombs, but I thought, that, I thought that yeah, he Clue does, had something. He, no, he does no. now because it's his bomb. <laughs> because Drake repositioned it for a new generation. Because these kids don't know nothing about that damn bomb. And that's that guy down the dial, Pump Faker Flex's signature. That's Clue's now. That's Clue's bomb. And I, I use it every morning and I give Clue his just due for <laughs> dropping that bomb. So therefore, you take that from him and give it to Clue. You reposition him like that. Then on the next disc, I'm going to buy bottles for Charlemagne. Friend of my, fr uh, enemy of my enemy is my friend. Right. And you're, you know, I would say the biggest hip hop personality on the radio. Hey, if you feel that way, I, I, I feel that way. I just be working, man. Yeah, you know. But I, like I said, I don't know Drake. Me and Drake could have a conversation. I don't know. He, I, I feel like he wouldn't be the type of dude I would get along with. But after seeing him this week, and how strategic he was, I like strategic people. I like the art of war. I like that kind of shit. That's dope to me. And he, I, I haven't seen anything that well executed in a long time. I mean, even down to the artwork of back to back was. The Toronto, the Toronto Blue Jays. It was the guy hitting Philadelphia, the home run against yeah. the Philadelphia in the World Series. Like he was, that's he's that strategic with right. It. And I guess I guess they had won a back to back uh, victory against Philly. That's what it was almost referring to. I had heard. Hey man, yeah. I thought it was dope. And I, you know, I was having a conversation with a hip hop icon. I'm not gonna say who, but he's a, he's a legend. And I don't even I'm not gonna say who because it was a conversation we was having. Yeah. And he didn't even he didn't want to address it on air, but he said that back to back is a top three disc record of all time. Right. I said right. I said five. And I'm gonna tell you why I said top five. Because I it's some I listen to it all the time. And it has nothing to do with my name in it. I just like the record. I like the bars. I like when that nigga's like, um a t trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers. Okay, I mean, you're getting like bodied by a singing nigga. When you talk about top records, I mean, I'm gonna take hit, hit him up. Hit him up's number one. No Vaseline. No Vaseline, number two. Take over to me is number three. Ether. I don't. I, I don't like Ether. Like I'm, I'm not a I huge Ether. I'm yeah, not a huge I, Ether fan. But what you can say, me, me and my man Ferrari, who's most deaf man, we were kind of going back and forth on Twitter, um, and he was saying, and I'm like, yeah, I didn't really like Ether a lot either. But he said, but you know something. Ether became a verb. It was so it was so it powerful. When you say you got ethered, everyone knows what you're talking Listen, about. Listen, the impact of ether was crazy. Yeah. I just my I said this before. My only problem with ether is like it's not cerebral. It's like the, if you want to insult a guy, you either call him a snitch, you call him gay. He even said uh, AIDS jokes. <laughs> like it was like really playground elementary. Takeover was. Fact after fact after fact, cerebral bars. The, the bridge is over. Bridge is over. Is up there. Bridge is over. Top five. I mean, that's, that's top five for me. That's top five for me. I, my my top five is hit him up. No Vaseline. Take over. Fifty Cent back down is yeah. a very slept on yeah. dish record, and it's a freestyle that. Uh, I smell pussy. Nah, that's a freestyle D Block did over I Shot You. When Jada's like, Rakim them wouldn't even respect Rakim with his Tupac with his spit in your face. Rakim them don't even respect you. Like Jada bodied that. But back to back is I don't I mean it's too early to tell, but it's a good record, man. Like it's a great dish record. A great dish record. I ain't the type of nigga that be typing niggas. Shout out to all my boss bitches, wife and niggas. Yeah, I mean, that was a line that stood out. That shit was dope, yo. It's a dope record, man. I mean, is, that a, is, that, is that a world tour, your girls tour? That, that stuck around. That's been sticking around. Yeah, and popping you had up. a world tour, your girls tour. Okay. I, 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 I think that shit is dope, man.
would Dre put me in it? Okay. I mean, because if they start from where they start from, I was just a quiet girlfriend who got beat up and told to sit down and shut up. Me, personally, I do as well because, I mean, even to this day, none of his kids, none of his baby mamas, his mistresses, anybody, nobody has came up with HIV or nothing like that. So, I mean, just, just rationally thinking something, something had to go on.